Hey guys, Jess here from Knockout Print Shop, and today I have a video where I am going to compare the Moxie Life goal setting planner, uh, weekly goal setting planner, to the Inkwell Press weekly that goal setting. So the Moxie Life is a weekly planner with a goal setting kind of planner built in. This is the Inkwell Press Weekly, where its primary intention is a weekly planner. It has a little bit of goal prepping in the beginning, but we're not talking about the Inkwell Press separate goal planner. I don't have that one that's not on my radar. So we're gonna talk about these two. So let's flip them open to the goal setting aspect so we can talk about this. So this planner, Moxie Life, obviously, if you've seen my other videos, goes into depth about the goal setting process. Not as extensive as Inkwell Press's goal planner or power sheets and some of the other ones, but definitely more than the Inkwell Press Weekly's goal prep. So she walks you through the different um, system, like the different steps. You go through your assessment. You go through marking your scores on your life compass and where you wanna be. You set intentions, you pick a word for the year. Then you go into some instructions on monthly, annual, weekly goals. You set your annual goals in each category. You have a vision board, some goal tips, and then you go into monthly goals, and then you go into weekly goals. So you can see this is a much more robust, goal-focused weekly planner. From there, you are gonna be going into weekly spreads. So when you look at your Inkwell Press planner that has the little bit in the beginning of the goal prep, Let's hit that and see. So here is Inkle Press. It's not as much. So there's no assessment. There is no um, kind of like walking you through instructional piece. There's a little bit of instruction in these like things, but that's about it. I know in her like videos that come with the planner, you do get a little bit more guidance on her system, which is annual goals is here on the left quarterly goals and then you go into monthly goals here and that's kind of where it goes that's where the breakdown stops um, so again you can see this is much less in depth than the moxie life planner so from the beginning i think there is pros and cons to having a planner like moxie life that has an assessment if you um, i definitely think there is something to be said for looking at where you are right now so you can figure out where you want to be. And I think this assessment is simple and gives you a easy to understand numerical value that allows you to assess each area and then decide where you want to be next. So I think they definitely hit the mark with uh, Moxie Life does on assessing where you are so you can figure out where you want to be. Now, in the regular old inkwell, they don't do that. They're not asking you any questions about where you are, how your last year went. I think all of that happens in her goal planner, but that's a separate, completely separate planner. So there's that. So that's first, first things first, how they differ in that way. Again, we're, again, we're not comparing the Inkwell Press goal planner. If we head back over to the Moxie Life Planner, I think for some people, um, depending on how you feel about doing self-assessments, sometimes for some people, they might get too much in their head about this. They might feel overwhelmed by this. Now in the world of goal planners, I think this one is much simpler than others that I've seen. Um, it's, you know, this assessment's mostly numerical. You don't have to dive deep into all this stuff. And her, her purpose with this process is very action oriented. Um, so I think Depending on the way your brain works, this may be the right amount of assessment, it may be too little, or it may be too much. So there's that. If you want the super simplest version of goal setting, Inkle Press Weekly. If you need a little bit more, but not as extensive as some of the others that are out there, I think Moxie Life is good. Okay, so there is that. And you get a lot more instructions in here. So from assessing where you are, Moxie Life definitely does a better job compared to the weekly Inkwell Press. You can set intentions, and I think the intention setting exercise is a little more obviously in depth here than in Inkwell's weekly. There's just like the what's my focus. Again, Inkwell has a lot of other resources in her book and her podcast and her emails and all that that I think go into depth in all of this system, but for me, that's not of interest to me, so I don't, I don't wanna seek out that information elsewhere when I'm using a planner but I'm sure you'll find that in their weekly, in their goal planner. Okay, so from there, when it look, when we look at annual goals, again, Moxie's gonna walk you through it more, but you have a lot more space in your Moxie life for 
annual goals. You have one, two, three, four pages, two goals per page lined. In Inkwell Press, your annual goals live on this page here. Now, this is a redesigned annual goals page from years past, and this is to me the most unfunctional page ever. There's no lines, the space for each category isn't even. Um, it's aesthetically cool looking when there's not writing on it, but other than that, I think it's not user friendly. So that's definitely something where I think Moxie Life wins is that you get an adequate amount of space lined and it's easy to write in. Um, Moxie Life has eight areas of life. Inkwell Press, at least in this version, in the weekly, you get six. I don't know what it is in the goal planner. For me, this is like a, a, a I have like a love hate with areas of this idea of like putting your life into various areas and picking goals for each area. <laughs> so six, I've done, I did this all year in 2019 and focused on these six areas in the Inkwell Press. And I always felt like this was too many areas for me because I didn't need to focus on certain areas and seeing that area blank, like let's say on the mission board would drive me nuts. Um, so I had to get over that as I went by or just fill in things that were more broad. So I thought six areas was too much, but then you have me bouncing to Moxie, which is eight areas. So um, within these six areas, I think they're okay. You have personal, social health, dream big, home, and financial. I know a lot of people don't like dream big. They find that annoying, not useful to them. I think this maybe have been better served for work or business or something like that. So I think the problem, as I said in another video, is when you're thinking about goal planners and you think about how you think about your life and the areas you break it up into, when you're getting a goal planner, because obviously they have to meet the general public's needs and everybody's life is different, they're picking things that they think are most um, like common across the board. So I feel like for me, this works okay, these six areas, but I feel like it's missing something like Moxie focuses, focuses on an area of fun and recreation. Inkwell doesn't do that, but that might be housed, let's say in this one, in personal. Um, again, Inkwell doesn't focus on work, but maybe you could have that in Dream Big. I don't know. I find that odd that that's not in here. Um, so I think there's that. Like You are never probably going to get the perfect one that has the areas of life mapped out just how you want to. Um, so that's where I think this is too many, but I also think the ones that they picked for the categories might be missing a little bit. Then you have Moxie Life, which to me is like, oh my God, eight areas of life. Do I need to focus on that many? But I think the way they're broken out and the categories she picked makes sense for most people a little bit more so than the Inkwell Press. So you have personal, fun and recreation, work and learning, relationships, health, spirituality, and personal growth, financial and physical environment. Um, the one caveat I think for me is with family and relationship, I think of this more as social. So I do like the social kind of category here in Inkwell Press because that's an area that I'm trying to focus on is social friendship community. And while that does fall under the realm of relationships, for some reason I think about those two things as different even though they're not. So my point is no planner is perfect because everybody's life is unique, but you make it work. So. I personally think for me in my life and I and I like less is more but I also like the I think Moxie does a little bit better of a job with having categories that make more sense than the six of Inkwell Press um, so there's that this Inkwell Press is very, very simple as far as the prep goes. It's not asking you to reflect. It's not asking you to assess. All you're doing is writing things you want to achieve, do try whatever in each area, and then breaking it down. So again, with Moxie Life, you're going to get a little bit more depth, a, more instruction on the breaking down process, more um, guidance and insight into how to take big goals and make them happen. So there's that. Um, I think another thing that if you're somebody that is goal oriented and you want a seamless from big to small system, I think the another benefit of Moxie is the color coding. So each category has an accompanying color and these colors do not change throughout the planner. So then when you get into your monthly, 
same categories, same colors, weekly, and then when you're gonna drill it down into daily tasks, habit trackers, anything, you tasks, you can pull these colors to, to kind of color code your planner. One of my problems with Inkwell Press's color system is you have color coded um, goal categories, you see here, and these don't show up anywhere else in the planner. So you have them in the quarterly, the annual and the quarterly page here, but then when we get into monthly goals, which are done on the mission board, from what I understand and how I use it, you go into their monthly palettes, which are really pretty, and that gives you a little more variety, obviously, than a planner like Moxie. But if you're really focused on goals and you wanna have this like breakdown that makes sense and is easy to remember, it's hard to go, well, if financial is green, but then I come to February and financial is gray, and I'm like, want to color code and break this down then from a monthly goal to a weekly action to a daily habit. Do I, you know, color code with gray pen or highlighters and stickers, or do I do it with green? So that's why we created our goal stickers that are based on the Press goal color. So if you're somebody that wants to break this down and keep this color theme for your goals, you can. Like our, our uh, mission board hexagons, and then we also have... Um, my gosh, come on. I don't think I have it here. But then we have like weekly action steps that are color coded. We have these as cut out icons, things like that to help you keep the consistency in the goal aspect of this planner. So I think obviously if you're buying Moxie, this is seamless and it's built in this color coding system that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so that I think before I get too much more in depth, I think is the major differences between these two particular planners and I think both of them will work for different people. I think if you're somebody that is focused on wanting a little bit more assessment, guidance, um, direction, and um, you want that seamless breakdown with color coding, I think Moxie Life is gonna be good for you. If you want an even simpler type of goal setting because this is not really why you're buying a planner. Maybe you have a few goals you want to write down and things like that, but this isn't your main focus and you want to just enjoy the colors. Again, maybe refer back to these goals here and there. I think the Inkwell Press is great um, and is a great planner, whether you're goal oriented or not. Uh, the one thing I think I would like to see in Moxie Life, and I know her and I talked a little bit already what she's gonna be doing, she's already making notes of what she would like to change for next year, is having a page in the prep work that's like a brain dump. So I talked about my brain dump sheet in my Moxie uh, goal setting video. So I think having a brain dump so you don't feel like you have to get the right goal in every category is going to be a great addition. So she's already said she's probably, I think she might be adding something like this next year, which is cool. The other thing I would like to see, I think because of the way my brain works, is some form of a reflection, a previous year reflection. Um, not that I need to go super in depth, but some kind of reflection, at least to say like, what goals did I achieve last year? Let me rate last year, something simple. So something like our year end goal uh, or our year end reflection, I think is definitely along with an assessment is important. So when you look back, assess where you are, set your goals. So I think that's something I would like to see too in Moxie Life along with the really cool life assessment here. Because what I did when I was setting my goals for 2020 in both Inkwell and Moxie was I took my 2019 and I had this open so that I could look at my goals, what I checked off and achieved, and I was like flipping through my reflections to get a sense as I did that reflection. So I looked at these goals, saw what I was done, what I had done, and if I wanted to carry anything over to the next year and just kind of analyze, well, that didn't work, why? Should I even focus on that again? Things like that. So I think that's something that's important. I think the Inkwell Press one, their goal planner does a reflection in the beginning. And I don't think it has to be super in depth. I think just like a little like, what did you do? Like, how did you feel about it? Um, is there things you wanna work on? Again, the same thing for next year, then where are we at? So, and I think um, that would be a, definitely a benefit to adding to the Moxie. Okay, so those are what I think are the pros, not even, I just wouldn't even call this pros and cons. The differences between the Moxie life weekly planner 
that's also a built-in goal planner and the Inkwell Press weekly planner, okay? So I don't know. I mean, I have no interest in the Inkwell Press goal planner itself, having a separate planner for that and kind of going that in depth. I don't personally have an interest in power sheets. That's just too much for me. I don't really need that. But I think these two um, are really good planners for people that want a simple goal setting system and a high quality planner. And they just have, again, they're just a little different. So it really depends on what your needs are as to which one is a better fit. Okay, so that is it guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe, I will leave links below and I will see you in the next one.